Klaus bringing one of every heavy tanking troop in the game. He's got super witches, super Valkyries, electro titans, golems, yetis, and a whole lot of lightning. Today, Klaus is going to be playing in the Creative Masters. And as a warm up, he's also playing in a war over for the Mulan Cup. So let's see what he has as a warm up before we get into the war between Klaus and Fluxy and Mask and Demo. It will be a grand finals match there for the Creative Masters. And because he's actually spawned two wars at the same time, he's got to finish this one because the other one is about to start in a few minutes and he needs to get this out of the way. So <laughs> it's kind of funny that he's playing in two different wars at the same time, especially something as complicated as the Creative Masters, where as they play through today, the judges, myself included, are going to judge them and give them bonus stars. They can either win zero, one, two, or up to three bonus stars as they do something absolutely crazy. Now, percentage is relevant in the Creative Masters because the judges will give the bonus stars, and unless those stars exactly match each other and it was already a tie, then percentage isn't going to cause any difference in the outcome of the war. So the changes in the stars will, and I'll explain that as we get into the judges mode later on, but just something to keep in mind. But it looks like Klaus was able to use a stone slammer to do a town hall takedown, and he uses that as a funneling point here for his queen. Definitely funnel out that entire right side of the base there with his world champion. The king takes the lead here as he makes his way forward there. Takes out the defensive queen and a super wall breaker to get all the way to the base there. And look at the funnel all the way out ahead there that he's been able to form. This queen is 100% go to the core of the base here. And it's just little things like this that he has such a mastery over his heroes. He can control them exactly where he wants to go and get some really, really high value out of them. And that's why he's been so good in the Creative Master series is because he can take whatever he wants to really after he does something crazy with his heroes and he can make obscure armies work. So as you can see, the queen continues to survive after she takes the monolith down into this other multi inferno, completely surround the back end scatter shot. And now just imagine if he can do this well with a meta attack in a tournament war, what can he do when we challenge him to break out a weird army? I guess we're about to find out. Good luck today, Klaus. Good luck today, Fluxy. And I guess we'll see what Mask could do. Mask has actually been really impressive as he's been playing through. So I'm excited for this one, guys. This is going to be huge. Let's get ready to dive in. This is going to be a two versus two. So each of the four players will have two attacks. There will be eight attacks total. And we already explained how it works. So let's dive right in. Lexi will start off here. He'll have two attacks. Klaus will have two attacks. And then the opponent's team, Mask and Demo, will return two attacks each. So I guess they can get a total of 12 stars here, potentially. But we'll see how they do. Looks like this one is breaking out a whole bunch of rock balloons. He's got enough uh, healers here for a hero charge. But he decides to clone up a Yeti bomb. And he's able to get the CC pull with it, but at least a monolith up. And he probably wanted that monolith to go down, so he has to invest some early spells here. He has the rock balloons, or those, the, I guess is a mix of balloons. Able to go in and get that air defense down that was targeted healers, but it doesn't actually take it. He puts in one more rock balloon. See, okay, here the queen under. <laughs> Come on, Fluxy! He pops the ward abilities in a little bit of a panic mode here. Oh, come on, Fluxy. This is sloppy. This is a really, really sloppy entry. That monolith not going down to the clone Giddy bomb really, really hurt him. And then it was compounded by his healers being dropped inside of the range of that air defense. And now he's going to push his way through. And you'll have a very, very, a very small amount of rocket boost to go deal with the back end of the base here. So, I mean, we got to keep in mind that as they play through, they don't necessarily need to triple, but they always need to make sure that they at least get a two star. And then they want to make sure that they wow the judges as much as possible. Because like we said, the percentage is kind of irrelevant. You're more about trying to do something crazy and at least get a two star out of it. So just keep that in mind here. He can still salvage this to the two star pretty easily right now, but I kind of want to see what the plan would have originally been there if he was able to maintain it the way it was supposed to go. But he does get a wall break through. The queen will step around. She still has her building attack there. So at least he's putting those queen charge skills to work here. However, the warden has taken healers and he's running a bit low on spells. The queen pops her ability. She is able to get the lock on town hall. And uh, okay, okay, where's the strong champion? Hey, the king clears out the air defense. He throws his shield and finishes the town hall off. He's got two stars. That was a disaster. 
That was a bit of a disaster. Lots of things complicated to start attack there, and it is going to be an impossible one to recover from here. But maybe they can pick it up with a judge vote later on in the war here. I guess it depends on what Klaus does and what Fluxy does on a second attack. Mask has been doing some crazy things lately, and this one is no exception. Look at this. He's got... He's got P.E.K.K.A.s, and P.E.K.K.A.s are honestly one of the most underutilized troops in the entire Town Hall 15 meta. But he's gonna break it out with, it looks like, a Skelly Bat Donut to wipe out the CC and the Monolith in the core of the base there. However, it looks like he potentially could have got that multi and photo if he really wanted to go for it. And the Bats actually go over there and take a couple strikes at it. And the Battle Battles will go repair that now. And there was extra potential there, but he did take out an extra Bomb Tower, so, you know, he got something as a bonus out of it and now he'll make his way in he's got the pekkas he's got a lot of healers here actually wait how many healers did he bring into this <laughs> he's got a lot of healers here actually he's got whatever he put onto his queen here and then he's got four more on standby but we got to be careful when we're running that many heroes or that many healers in a multi-hero charge that the eagle artillery doesn't activate and absolutely wreck our heroes so be very, very mindful of that. He does end up going to the Volta Inferno there. Probably going to freeze it. He decides to go invisible. That works too. Wall break into the core of the base here. Going to try to push the queen towards the town hall by the looks of it. The healers are okay. Expo picks up on him though. Into the rage tower by the town hall. He's going to activate here in just a moment. It, it, it kind of bacons out there for a second. It was, uh, there we go. Now it throws. Now it throws. But the king is tanky. I think it was faking us out there because he had the uh, king go to Phoenix there, but at least he was able to sustain the tank. And he pops the queen ability. He's gonna lose the healers here as a result of the eagle artillery targeting onto them, and the queen does go down. Uh oh. All right. Well, what do we do now? Heck is now deploying for the bottom base here. Is he okay? I'm not sure if he's okay right now, but he'll ward ability his rogue champion and headhunters, or maybe it was the poison lizard through the defensive queen. Right, Rudder takes the. Shortcut across into the multi for there with our champion will stick to the outside. Peck is coming down to provide tanky down the line. Well, Hog Riders that he can slip into the backside here, but he's got to be careful with the Hog Riders. He's got to make sure that he supports them with more troops as he goes in to the backside expo. So if he can wait for that expo to be tanked, then he can put the Hog Riders in for the right. He can get into the Eagle Artillery. Now would be a perfect time. Send those Hogs. Put the Hogs in for the right. There we come. <laughs> is he listening? It feels like it, right? All right, looking good here. Still has a chance. Mask is moving. <laughs> I mean, that that queen charge was 100% sacrificial. He's got this under control. The Electro Titan and the Yeti provide tanking to the backside. He does a multi-hero charge with one completely sacrificed Pekka's working on the outside as support. And he's able to get the first triple on the board. And with that, Mask and Debo start this grand finals with the lead. Klaus bringing one of every heavy tanking troop in the game. He's got Super Witches, Super Valkyries, Electro Titans, Golems, Yetis, and a whole lot of lightning. All right, if anybody can turn this war around, it will be Klaus. He will start in with that lightning, taking out the Rage Tower over on the far top side of the base there, including the Eagle Artillery. Warden protects the blimp to go secure the Town Hall takedown, and he'll send in a handful of balloons with that Ward ability. Warden's on air. He'll get the scatter shot down. He was able to slip in some headhunters. He got the defensive world champion down. Sneaky Goblins coming out of the blimp there. Going to secure the Town Hall takedown, and he gets a solid funnel form. Now, there's a big chunk of this base missing. He's got a lot of heavy tanking troops here, and he, like we said, can support his heroes like no other player in Clash of Clans. So, they'll put that to the test here. And he'll see how much tanking he can provide and how far he can push them through the base here. Because if you think about it, when you go with a, effectively a full ground attack here, you have to keep your heroes alive for the entirety of it to have a really high chance of pulling through. Because you don't have healers in an attack like this. And that makes it very, very challenging. Like that the uh, big boy survived on the right side. However, the witch went down. He had a giant over there. And he was tanking for that witch to start off there. But he'll throw a yeti over to replace. And he's got a couple wizards there. So they're just going to work along the top of the base there just the same time. That doesn't feel like it is a force up there that is in charge of anything majorly significant. It's just to save time in the backside. The queen ends up going to ability here. King's providing tanking up ahead here. Electro Titan giving him some 
insurance against so many any ground skills that may pop in the area, but I thought I heard the world champion start. Note that was a, another Electro Titan in from the left side of the base here. Drops in a skeleton spell onto the model. Nope, I did see the world champion. She steps in, she'll get the stun onto the model. He needs to get the defensive queen out of the way though. But the queen distracted into the ground skill still, but his king makes his way over there. And they will engage in just a moment. Freeze up. His world champion and the king both arrive at the same time here. The world champion needs to take the turn to the right and go to the multi inferno. She goes over there, and the queen is able to handle the scatter shot. He's got us all a chance of pulling through. Electro Titan is still providing tanking. Queen has the protection. World champion steps through. Does she have the diggy still? Looks like she lost the diggy at some point here, but she still has her ability. Looking good here. He just needs to have this ability. Hit the last couple of defenses. Take the Tesla down, or I guess pop it there and power through the cannon at the end. He's got enough HP. Klaus gets it done that's what we're talking about baby he's got he's got a little of every different tanking troop in the game his queen survives until the end where champion powers through the end that skeleton spell perfectly plays to get him a huge amount of protection there and that is also a crazy crazy attack you know the only ta the only uh tanking troop he was missing the Pekkas. <laughs> the only troop that he didn't bring there was the one that Mask brought in. So I really like that, and that's gonna win some judges over. Responding now will be Demo. If you were a judge in this match here, where would you be voting right now? Would you be leaning towards Mask and Demo or towards Luxie and Klaus? I'm kind of split right now. I am honestly at a point right now where. From what I've seen so far, I would give both teams three bonus stars because this has been an insane start. But they got to keep it up here. And Mask and Demo will have a bat. Okay, okay. A <laughs> double invisibility to deliver a battle drill. Dr oh my god, that was nice. That was really nice. Is he going to do a blizzard out of a battle drill? No way. <laughs> all right, all right. This is. <laughs> this will definitely win some points with the judges here. Had to invest a lot into that, had to invest the rocket blues and all that invisibility, but being able to skip a couple of defenses is definitely not going to be super efficient, but it was a lot of fun to watch. However, it does not claim all of the targets he would like to grab. He leaves up a multi inferno, he leaves up the rogue champion, leaves up the queen, leaves up the monolith. Now, you think that a uh, battle drill going into that area would be able to drop out the wizards right where you want them, but because it opens up the wall, when it pops up, it gave them access to walk backwards and it kind of messed them up a little bit. So we'll see what we can do from here, but just needs to make sure that he gets a two star at a bare minimum and then let it come down to the judges and we'll see if this has enough to power through for a triple, but I'm a little bit skeptical right now. Don't like to see that much invested into something as big and important as what he did with that battle drill and then have it not get every single one of his primary targets. But he'll push his way towards the town hall. He's got seven more rock of balloons. He's got a skeleton spell. He'll pop the ward ability to protect the king and all of his barbarians there. They'll surge their way into the defensive king. Taking damage from the monolith. Losing healers to black air bombs. Freezing up that monolith. That's his second to last freeze here. But he still has a queen ability, so he's okay. The rock of balloons can definitely clear up some percentage on the backside of the base there. Just like we saw during Fluxy's attack. I feel like that attack and this attack are very very close to on par with each other and the attack from masking klaus i feel like are also right on par with each other so i think that this one is going to end up as a miss the queen goes down now the world champion gonna keep on sweeping through but i think in my opinion as far as what i'm gonna vote as a judge i think that these teams are i think they're tied right now i think they're exactly tied I think this attack was very cool. I like what he did. Maybe even a step above what we saw out of Fluxy. Because we've never seen somebody try to do a blizzard out of a battle drill. And I think he'll definitely win some points over the judges with that. But it's not going to be successful. So nice try to demo. It'll rack into the 80s. But like we said, percentage is kind of irrelevant. It's just about getting two stars, three stars, and winning over judges. So nice try. If you look back at that attack there, you'd see that most of the targets that he ended up even at the end of the base there were the things that he was supposed to take at the start those were the things that caused problems so i think there's a real possibility he could have pulled that through there had he got the blizzard value that he's looking for however now Fluxy's gonna change things up here and he's gonna be breaking out the other least used troop here at the town hall 15 meta and he's gonna be breaking out seven yetis into this attack he's also got a recall and obviously he's gonna do a queen charge 
Bane needs to make sure she doesn't get her healers targeted here. You know, Rage Up is engaged as defensive world champion. Not looking to go to the status shot, looking to just walk off to the right here and go pick up the air defense and then Actually, he is gonna... Oh, there is an open in the wall there. I didn't realize that. Okay, he is able to slip the queen in, but he ends up getting his healers targeted. That's the problem. He's gonna end up turning south, I believe. He recalls her out, though. He's not gonna lose additional healers here. He just gets her out of there. And the healer that he did lose, I think he was gonna end up leaving it behind there with the recall anyways. So I, I think that just works out anyways, you know? <laughs> you know, you can only pull out the unicorn and four healers. So if you started with five and you sacrificed one and left it behind there to get shot down by the air defense, then it doesn't really affect the outcome, right? But he does go ahead and rage up a... I thought it was the Eddie Bomb there. It looks like it is going to be a Blizzard in the same stroke as he's doing his Queen Charge, but the Blizzard dies and it doesn't get anything. Uh-oh, Fluxy. Fluxy, Fluxy, Fluxy. Okay, well, that complicates things a lot. Did the Queen go down? He lost his queen. He's about to lose his warden now. He got almost no value out of that blimp. He needs to secure the town takedown. Uh-oh. <laughs> Flex is throwing over here. He'll have his warden take out that defensive queen. The king will make his way towards the town hall, but he really needs to secure the town takedown right now. He's got one invisibility, one freeze. He still has CC troops running around, so his road champion can stall up on the lava hound. You don't want to star this. No, don't want to star this. He pops the king ability. He has the king able to go forward inside of that invisibility, and he's able to skip a lot of the other buildings there to try to lock directly out of the town hall. But he's not going to have enough to take it, I don't think. There's a lot of damage right there. Even with the Phoenix, he's not going to be able to get it. Guys, that was a disaster. Fluxy off his rocker today, not going to be able to pull through, and he leaves a star on the board. And now, we're going to have to see Klaus get a triple to make up for that. And then, Klaus is just going to have to carry the team to victory. F's in the chat there for Fluxy. That was rough. That was really, really rough here. But now, it's time for Demo, and he is breaking out a, a 13 Valkyrie and four Super Archer attack. He's got Sneaky Goblins in the mix as well. And he's also got a whole lot of healers here. It's looking like it's gonna be a double hero charge with 13 Valkyries and four Super Archers. If he can pull this off here, he'll definitely win the favor of the judges. And I don't know where we stand right now. I've definitely still been impressed by the attacks that have gone through. But the attacks that have not gone through have been a bit of a disaster. So I don't know where we stand. He ends up putting in the Super Archers to the far left side of the base there with the extra healers. And they're unfortunately separating to multiple different stacks there. And a lot of them got picked off. So Demo's off to a rough start already. He'll have the Flame Queen go to try to secure the Town Hall. But he lost all of those Super Archers. He didn't count for the Eagle Artillery doing so much more damage. We talked about that in the previous attack there. We talked about if you're gonna run that many healers, you really have to deal with the Eagle Artillery very, very, very early. And apparently he misaccounted for that and he dropped too many troops there. And I don't know how he really could have avoided that. It's just a oversight there by the looks of it. But he'll push these Valkyries forward there. They're trying to chase down the Headhunters right now. The Valkyries end up missing one of the Headhunters that locks onto his Warden right now. He's going to force the Warden ability. He needs that Warden to step up, but the Warden ends up missing all the Valkyries. This is, this is messy. That's one of the biggest problems with Valkyries in general. Wait, are they protected? Maybe they did get hit. I take it back. I think they actually did get hit, but there still is. I mean, the, the Warden activated Cloak Mode here to try to get away from that, that uh, <laughs> Headhunter, but it's still not enough to get that thing off of his back. So he eventually does go down here. Looks like the Valkyries are still alive somehow. They ended up breaking a wall of fort here. And whatever healers are still alive are going to continue to travel with the Queen. The Queen still has her ability. She'll step her way forward. Single Inferno and the Multi Inferno ends up taking out almost all of his healers here. He's got the Unicorn still standing. And he will secure the Town Hall takedown. He's not going to triple this, guys. That was, that was definitely sloppy. There were a lot of mistakes in that. And it's already a difficult enough attack as it is to be able to go through. So, I mean, with that defense, if we can now see a triple from Klaus, there is a very realistic ability that Klaus can make up for the one star. 
And if he can six pack right now, he could ultimately carry his team back into this war. And then it would just come down to the judges to decide what the outcome is. Time and time again, the wars fall on Klaus's shoulders. This is no exception. And Klaus not going to wince away from it in the slightest. He's breaking out the Noah's Ark. He has attempted this multiple times throughout the season, and he has still not been able to be successful with it yet. He's come close many times, but he'll try to make it work in this one. He's got 10 lightning and two quakes, so we can take out this entire block of defenses around the Eagle Artillery. I assume that's his target. He'll start in with a blimp to go secure the town hall. Short travel time for the blimp. He didn't run into, run into any significant number of traps there. And if you get that invisible tower to trigger before his face troops come out, he'll be in a good spot here. Looks like everything gets burned up there. And there is... The invisibility tower. And his freeze was mistimed. Uh-oh! Klaus! <laughs> Oh no, is this is this the end of the road? You know what? They made it to the grand finals. They made it to the grand finals, but <laughs> oh no. A oh, rip swag a blimp and a Noah's Ark. That's not what you wanted to see happen here. Definitely not what you wanted to see happen, but you had to freeze that invisibility tower right before a trigger to make sure that the Invisibility Tower didn't protect the Town Hall from the Sneaky Goblins and a slight mistiming and now a Sacrifice Queen that dies through her ability. Oh, Klaus. Oh, Klaus. You know what? If he can at least secure a two-star here, we'll see what happens with the attack from the other side. But if they don't pick up a big defense here, they're in a world of hurt here. We did see some cool attacks here so far, but this one was... Another one that came through disastrous. I, I don't know what's up with this war. <laughs> we got we got spoiled with the star here, and then <laughs> and then this is happening. But he will push his way in to go secure the town hall takedown now. He's got the Diggy that can get the stun of the town hall in just a moment. He's got the ward ability that can protect there. Diggy steps in. Diggy gets the stun. He will end up going invisible again. Goes ahead and pops that ward ability. Town hall. Nowhere to be found there. Nothing you can do about it. He just has to wait it out here. The Warden and Aurora Champion step back into it. He does not have a way to protect his, his Aurora Champion there. And he will end up getting that investment to pay off. And he is able to secure the Town Hall takedown. Now over the right side of the base. He'll try to salvage what he can. He just needs to get a little bit more percentage. And I mean, it's such a shame when it goes wrong like that and they go into backup because you don't truly get to see what his overall thought process was what his overall plan was when you have to start to dump resources into the town hall takedown again then it just throws everything off there so he'll gather 50 percent and we'll pass it over and see what mass can do to close out this war and close out the season close out this grand finals and crown a champion I do not think that Mask and Dima will fall out of the good graces of the judges right now. The only way that I see this war swinging is if Mask ends up with a one star. But if he just throws in a meta attack here to try to secure a one star, or excuse me, if Mask just throws in a meta attack here to go secure a two star, then the judges would probably count that against him. So he has to stay creative here. He has to go with the original plan. And if he ends up with a big mistake here, if he ends up with one star, it could still throw the war because I think the judges are still going to be fairly even in the outcome of this match here. But let's see what he can do. He'll go in with the Skelly Donut, but he makes a mistake with it right out of the gate. Just that invisibility. Skeletons staying where they're supposed to be. Next invisibilities are placed well. And he made that defensive hero there invisible, or I guess, uh, never mind. <laughs> Disregard. He misses the CC, and the Battle Builders save it! Okay, there is hope now for Fluxy and Klaus, as he ends up missing his primary target with the Skelly Donut, and he's gonna follow it up now with the Recall Warden with golems, a handful of balloons, and a dragon rider. I guess, I don't even know what I'd call this attack right now, but he goes ahead and recalls just his warden and then deploys the queen to pick up the healers here. However, that causes the eagle artillery to activate. 
The warden still counts as having dropped there as far as the eagle artillery is concerned, but he'll send in the slammer. And the slammer, I assume, would have a uh, ranged up Yeti bomb inside there to go try to get this eagle artillery down. But it looks like an electro dragon pops out of there. He's just gonna go take out that multi inferno. But the queen, she's the one who ends up using the right there, not the electro dragon. So it's not gonna get that eagle artillery down. And the next shots are going to be right there. He gets it distracted by the golem up top. The Queen will make her approach towards the Town Hall. She has her ability. If she takes the Town Hall right now, then he's still going to secure the second star and probably lock in the war. Something goes wrong with this Queen in a hurry here. Eagle Artillery stays distracted, though. The Queen will step in. She will secure the Town Hall. That should get it done. That should win this Grand Finals, but everything is still going to plan here. So let's see if he can still turn this around to a triple right now because it's very impressive so far. King makes his way into the bottom of the base there, into the defensive queen, able to get her out of the way there. The ward ability protects his way through to the middle of the base there. However, there's lots of headhunters. He ends up losing his world champion, loses his warden. The headhunters absolutely wrecked him now. And now they turn over to his queen, and that'll be the end of her as well. So, nothing short of a massive swing from the judges would save Klaus and Fluxy right now. This is going to be a one-star advantage into Mask and Demo's favor, but we'll go ahead and we'll vote. We'll let the judges decide, and I guess we'll see what the ultimate outcome is. Klaus and Fluxy scored a lot of three-star votes there from the judges, but holy three-star votes across the board there! Mask and Demo sweep the board, and they will be crowned the Grand Finals champions of the Creative Master Series. I guess Mask definitely won over some votes there with that crazy P.E.K.K.A. attack, and they deserve their victory today. So, that's the end of the Creative Masters. Thank you guys so much for coming out and supporting all the way through the season. I'm sure we'll have more of it, and congratulations to Mask and Demo.